see those shiny bits right there and on the opposite side. I've taken this spoke shave which was not working well at all and uh, with 50 grit paper, a couple of rounds of that and some 120, I cleaned it up so that it's mostly flat. Took it to where it would be ridiculous to keep going and then checked it out. Also took out everything here, removed all the screws and so on and used these files to, um, to flatten out the surface inside of there. This is a really cheap, uh, cheaply made spoke shave and it was not working well at all but I have, I want to use it so I bought it. So I trimmed it up a little bit. I'm just getting back into bow making after several months off and I just built this new bench with uh, leg vise which I'm starting to get used to. It's got a vise grip like this on each side. Unlock, lock, pretty easy, lots of torque. Temporarily I've got this, uh, this is just a prop holding it up right there. But what I'm going to do is drill two holes in the tabletop here and make a piece that's got two dowels on it, lock it in, and set it there, and then I won't have to bother with the clamp anymore. The two pegs will keep it from, from popping out, and uh, then it'll just slip in and out very easily. Maybe even do that today. Now that I've trimmed this thing up and made the Maybe in the, in the light it's easier to see. And made the bottom better to work with. And don't let the... You, you can see how bad it is. The, it's not a complete surface. It will never look parallel. So I just made it flat. As flat as I could under the blade. Flat as I could along the sole. And started to work with it on this piece of U wood which I have been saving since last fall. It's now June, I guess I've had this thing since September, so nine months or so. You see it's got almost a 90 degree twist. The other end, the, the inner grain is, is shooting straight up. Here it's sticking out maybe, well I guess it's not almost 90, but it is 45 or so and that's pretty sharp. It kinks severely back here, must have been a knot, and so this one's going to require to be um, thinned down and then heated with the weight on it and it, it'll be set up differently, set up in such a way that the as the heat plasticizes the wood, the weight will drag it in the desired direction until it's stabilized. Uh, where I want it to be so that the thing looks straight or just passed straight. And then I'll uh, and then I'll have something that I can really work with. But until I to get there, I've got to clean it up. So you can see along the length of it. You know, I just chopped this thing out with an axe. I was in quite a hurry actually. I took a whole bunch of these staves and did exactly this to them. Chopped them down to kind of two by twos and threw them in the closet. And so now I'm getting to work on this one a little bit. Do a stage of the work. And, uh, and I find that the spoke shave that I just trimmed up is working great. I didn't even resharpen the blade. I had sharpened the blade previously, not used it for a long time. And, uh, and now with those little improvements that I made that took, you know, half an hour, I'm getting beautiful cuts. I want to demonstrate a technique of carving around knots which will enable you to get good wood and kind of try and pass on a bit about reading the grain. I don't know if the camera will set up properly. 
But the idea is, you've got to, but you, there's, a, there's kind of a spot in the wood here on the side of the knot where the grain changes direction and where from here I'm cutting t towards the end if I do that in here and it tears out as you can see from what happened when I was chopping it down to a 2x2 two two. so I'll take this spoke shave and see if I can demonstrate how to work with that and get the wood around both sides of the knot smooth from this angle to see it because here where it tears out is where you need to turn the knife like I've done here. I can really cover some ground without making, uh, without leaving a rough surface. I find the yew trees a good yew tree is hard to find for bow woodward, you could imagine. You'd be lucky to get one fully straight and uh, not free two by two sort of six feet long piece of yew out of the out of the yew wood that grows here uh, uh, in what the Americans call the Pacific Northwest, but we in Canada just call the West Coast. And so it requires care and attention and watchfulness and the result of that care and attention and watchfulness is just beautiful smooth wood that doesn't even need to be sanded and the time comes and this thing is bending and ready to be oiled I'll just uh, I'll just what's the word again burnish it with uh, with an antler tool and bring out the shine